Welcome to the Hoodoo and Chill Podcast, the number one hoodoo and spirituality-based podcast bringing awareness to African-American spirituality and a wide range of thought-provoking topics. I am Papa Seer, your host, your narrator, and your storyteller. Before the show begins, make sure you're subscribed or following the show so you don't miss out on any episodes. And as always, donations of love keep our podcast alive and give us the ability to upgrade the show, enhance our content, and most importantly, do what we love. You can use any link in the description to send your donation of love today. Now, let's start the show. From the pews of Southern Baptist churches in my Virginia hometown, the whispers of the devil echo through the halls, leaving a mark on my curious mind. As a child, I found myself captivated by the concept of the devil. It was in those sacred spaces that I encountered the tales of this formidable adversary, a force powerful enough to challenge the very essence of divinity itself. Guided by the teachings of the Bible and the sermons that resonated within those walls, I was introduced to a malevolent figure, eternally warring against God, daring to tread the path of defiance and self-will. Through my observations, I discovered many mysteries surrounding this enigmatic figure, as well as contradictions. What I came to realize was that as much as the Bible mentioned the devil, it failed to provide a thorough backstory of such an important figure. It didn't seem to make sense that the Bible provided so much information and knowledge on the lives of prophets and many others of the Bible, who were more often than not mere vessels utilized by God to complete a task. There are chapters upon chapters dedicated to the lives of Moses, David, Solomon and Jesus. But there is little to none about the backstory of the devil. One would assume a solitary figure deemed as the opposing force to God and responsible for all the world's malevolence would have more information readily available. To gain a better understanding of this enigmatic character, I delved into alternate sources such as the Book of Enoch, the Satanic Bible, in the infamous poem, Paradise Lost, by John Milton. These resources proved invaluable, injecting the backstory of the devil with additional layers and sparking a fresh thought process on the essence of this elusive figure. It dawned on me that the true narrative of the devil transcended the confines of the Bible, finding resonance in the hearts and minds of individuals who firsthand had experiences with this force. Look to lore is what my spirit said, and look to lore I did. Folklore, a gumbo of traditions, customs, and beliefs, serve as the compass in my exploration. Hailing from Richmond, Virginia, where summers sizzle with the intensity of the southern heat, and winter whispers the proximity to the icy airs of the north, I reflect on the unique backdrop that shaped my upbringing. Growing up in my hometown, attending the Southern Baptist Church was the foundation of my faith. However, what sets Black American spirituality apart is its resilience and adaption and adoption. We've navigated a history of forced adaption to marginalized circumstances and adopting and molding customs and ideologies to fit within our culture. In our sacred spaces of worship, even within the Christian faith, echoes of indigenous and ancient African traditions persist. A revelation struck me long ago. Black people are not worshiping the same God that condemned them to half a millennium of slavery and another 500 years of institutionalized slavery. This realization propelled me into the realm of B.A., or Black American spirituality, where interpretations of the devil inevitably differ from those of the white Christian faith. 
Look to the Lord meant abandoning the reliance on religious text, recognizing the Bible's uselessness in unveiling the devil of black American faith. I shifted my search to the words of my people spoken from their own lips. The truth lies in the fact that black Americans have always vocalized their beliefs about the devil. The challenge, however, lies in the misinterpretation and lack of understanding of black American spirituality. To form a comprehensive understanding, one must grasp the core concepts of BA spirituality and its pantheon of divinity. Reflecting Alan Kardec's ideology on spiritual grade in spiritism, a spiritual hierarchy exists among black American spiritists as follows. The Holy Trinity. God, the Supreme Spirit, formless and genderless. The Divine Spirit, the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, which possesses the individual, enabling them to perform readings, visions, prophecy, and healing. Jesus, the deity who incarnated earth. The man is not important, but the spirit. Saints, spirit guides and forces. Religious saints, messenger spirits, guiding spirits and forces of nature. And last on this pantheon, the devil, the trickster spirit, or spirit of evil. Now that we have a better understanding of the core concepts in pantheon of the Black American spiritualist tradition, let us now delve deeper into the profile of the devil according to the theology of Black American spiritualists. We will look into this into three main concepts. Concept number one, the devil in the church. Concept number two, the devil in hoodoo. And concept number three, the devil in black American folklore. The devil in the church. In the black American church, one core concept revolves around the belief in spirits and the potential for individuals to be possessed by either benevolent or malevolent forces. Unlike the Abrahamic traditions, where the devil is often perceived as an opposing figure to the Lord, the concept of the devil in Black American spiritualist church takes a different shape. Here, the devil is viewed as more of a spirit or even a collective of spirits, capable of influencing individuals to act outside of the bounds of Christian doctrine. Expressions like, the devil is in that child, Lord, get the devil behind me, or the devil made me do it, may seem like mere folklore, but they carry significant weight in the realm of black American spirituality. These sayings reflect on the belief that the devil, within the church context, is perceived not as an individual or a direct adversary of God, but as a spirit that dwells on earth influencing and ruling over it. This perspective aligns with the doctrine of spiritism, where the devil is not considered as a singular entity, but rather a low-grade spirit or trickster spirits that inhabit the earth. These spirits wield considerable influence over tangible possessions, conversations, speech, and even intellectual pursuits, asserting their supremacy on earth. Figures associated with these spirits can impact individuals through spiritual intuition or conversation. This distinction becomes evident when comparing it to the Black American Church's viewpoint, where the devil is seen as a form of full-blown possession taking residence within a human being the devil in hoodoo. 
Venturing into the realm of the hoodoo religion or tradition unveils a vastly different portrayal of the devil. It's crucial to acknowledge that hoodoo initially wielded as a weapon against adversaries among black Americans and the original African slaves in America shapes the devil as not only an adversary, but as a figure explicitly opposing the white Christian God. In the context of early Africans or black Americans, Christianity was presented through the Negro or slave Bible, justifying the enslavement of black people and perpetuating racial prejudice. Examining the insights of hoodoo practitioners as articulated by figures like Zora Neale Hurston or Harry Middleton Hyatt, the devil is depicted as an individual to be contacted for acquiring specific spiritual gifts. In hoodoo, the devil is portrayed as a knowledgeable figure capable of teaching the practitioner the secrets of the occult, working with roots, or serving as a deal maker for tangible items and talents. Legendary stories, such as Robert Johnson allegedly selling his soul to the devil to master the guitar abound in hoodoo tradition. Practitioners may undergo ritualistic tactics at crossroads, making contact with the hoodoo devil to make petitions or wishes. Contrary to being viewed as a form of Satanism, I argue that labeling these practices as dealings with the devil stems from a limited vocabulary imposed on a marginalized community. Early Black Americans may not have had alternative words to replace the devil in any malevolent figure or opposing force to the Christian God could be perceived as such. In the hoodoo tradition, terms like devilments encompassed all workings of conjuration and root work, broadening the concept beyond a singular devil to include a host of spirits outside the Christian faith. The Devil in Folklore In the realm of Black American folklore, the devil takes on a personalized and intimately human character, echoing whispers of traditional African folklore, particularly the archetype of a trickster spirit. Zora Neale Hurston's Every Tongue Got to Confess provides a rich resource for understanding this depiction of the devil. Within this folklore, the devil maintains its Abrahamic origins as well as an adversary to God. However, in Black American folklore, the devil assumes the role of a humorous trickster character reminiscent of traditional African trickster spirits. Instead of engaging in battles with God, the devil in Black American folklore becomes a crafty and snarky individual who plays mild tricks on unsuspecting individuals in a light-hearted and humorous manner. In this folklore tradition, the devil is portrayed as appearing in moments of bad luck, often inciting a chuckle with his antics. The devil doesn't engage in direct conflict with God, but rather focuses on playing tricks on humans for his own amusement and humor. Numerous stories recount deals made with the devil, such as High John making pacts or agreements, even marrying the devil's daughter. From this perspective, the devil is personalized and made relatable, serving as a reflection of the human psyche and our penchant for making poor choices. This portrayal adds a distinctive and whimsical layer to the folklore, portraying the devil not as a malevolent force, but as a mischievous figure woven in the fabric of everyday life. As we wrap up this exploration into the hoodoo devil, let's reflect on the diversity of Black American spirituality. In this mosaic, 
The devil transforms from a biblical adversary into a trickster spirit, treading through traditions, spirituality, and folklore. This vibrant panorama reshapes our understanding of the devil, inviting us to reconsider this enigmatic force that has intrigued minds through the ages. In Black American spirituality, the devil becomes more than a simple antagonist. Instead, it reflects our humanity, mirroring the complexities of the human experience. The devil, in this context, is not confined to a rigid good versus evil narrative, but represents the dance of light in shadows within the human soul. The shift from a biblical adversary to a trickster spirit challenges our preconceived notions and encourages us to explore nuances. This transformation invites us to see beyond the traditional black and white view of the devil. We are encouraged to explore the shades of gray, the subtleties that make the devil not just a malevolent entity, but a multifaceted being that plays a complex role within the cultural and spiritual fabric.